Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over is heat pump thermostat wiring. This is a Honeywell Pro TH3000 uh, thermostat, and presently I just have batteries in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you what each of the terminal letters uh, are for. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So we have our R terminal is our 24 volt power into the thermostat. All right. And we have C is where you would wire your blue common wire so that this way you could power the thermostat without batteries. It's optional. You could have it hardwired with the power coming into the thermostat and then going back out to the C terminal on the control board of the furnace or the fan coil. Um, but you don't have to have that if you do have batteries, such as this right here. Okay. Uh, so you can actually take the batteries out. You can take the batteries out here and break the red wire if you would like uh, with a float switch. So this way you can um, reduce the possibility of having water damage in your house. All right. So this way the homeowner or business owner immediately knows to call service and if you were to break this red wire then you would have no power coming into the thermostat and you would know that something's wrong so you would go ahead and start looking all right so uh, we went over red R power wire C all right that's common that's blue wire B is a reversing valve all right it powers the reversing valve but it powers it backwards uh, than what we're used to basically root and ream uh, for the most part, just those two manufacturers, they power the reversing valve during heat mode. So if you have a router ream and you're hooking this up to a heat pump, uh, then you would use the B terminal for the reversing valve instead of O. Okay. So we're going to continue on here. You have O right here. That is the reversing valve that will be powered during cooling mode. It's non-powered during heat mode. G. G is used for the fan, and that's denoted by the green wire, and that's your G terminal. The fan is powered anytime cooling or heating is called on, on this thermostat right here. Y, um, the normal thermostat color code would mean Y is cooling, but in this case, Y is the compressor. So the compressor, yellow. All right. So either heating or cooling, Y would be energized for the heat pump. Aux, aux is for if the thermostat ends up getting three degrees higher than what it's uh, calling for, then what it's going to do is it's going to ramp up the heat by energizing the aux wire from R to aux. Okay, and aux could be your the electric heat strips. Okay, so that will turn turn on automatically if you get three degrees above whatever you have set it at on your thermostat. So if you're only one degree higher than, or one degree lower than what you have the temperature set at, then the regular heat pump will be turning on in order to um, fulfill the load. Okay. So, but uh, if it if it gets too cold and the heat pump can't uh, keep up with the load of the house, then the aux will be powered as well. All right. Now E E is your emergency heat. So if you turn your thermostat to emergency heat all the way over to the side it's going to immediately click on and power if it's your heat strips for an air handler or it is a furnace um, it's going to go ahead and power that directly and not turn on the heat pump so this particular thermostat has no way of telling uh, what the outdoor temperature is it's not set up for a temperature sensor outdoor there's other thermostats you can use uh, that will have um, spots on the terminal block for an outdoor sensor, which in that case would turn the heat pump off and uh, turn the the secondary stage of heat on either the electric strip heating or the furnace, uh, whatever that may be. Now on this thermostat L right here, that all that is is just a power source for when you turn this to emergency heat. So when you turn this to emergency heat, what you're going to have is you're going to have R and L touching. It's not normally used very often, um, you know, for for heat, uh, for emergency heat, but it, it is a another power source wire from that will connect from the red to the L wire. Okay. 
And so, you know, you have one, two, three, four, five, six wires here. You should have an additional two wires. Typically, you use 18 8 wire for something like this. And you could use a wire that's even more wires if you have an outdoor sen temperature sensor. So you have two additional wires here. You see a brown and a black. You always want to make sure you run additional wires to a thermostat just in case one of these wires was to fail or it's touching another one somewhere, one that it's not supposed to. For instance, if the G, the green, was touching the, the C, the blue, somewhere, maybe in the thermostat wire itself, you could always change that green wire out with the black wire uh, here and at the control board of the indoor unit. And that way, um, you don't have to rerun all new thermostat wire. So you just always want to have at least one additional thermostat wire for um, just changing a wire out later later down the line. All right, so how it all works is you have red that comes in as a 24-volt power source into the thermostat. It finds its way back through the C, and that's what powers the thermostat. Uh, you don't need to use the C if you have batteries, and if you do have batteries and you want to use the C, you can use both. It's fine, uh, but you don't need the batteries. So for cooling, what, you, what would happen is you have 24 volts comes in through the R or the red, and what happens is the, the R terminal and the orange terminal touch, the R terminal and the G terminal touch, and the R terminal and the Y terminal touch. So all three of all three of these wires right here touch the R, okay? And that all happens actually in, in the face right here, okay? If you were to turn heat on and you only had a temperature of one degree higher uh, than what it's actually at in the house, what would happen is this R terminal would touch the Y terminal and the R terminal would touch the G terminal, okay? So that's what would happen, and that would turn heat on on systems that were, you know, heat pumps that were not root or ream. Uh, if they were root or ream, what would happen is you would have to move this orange wire over to the B, and during, um, uh, that would actually just be a reverse, basically. The B, all right, would get powered in heat mode, okay? So what would happen in heat mode, say if you had it one degree higher, then what would happen is the R would touch the B, the R would touch the G, and the R would touch the Y. So I hope that's not too confusing, uh, but uh, that's what happens with a uh, root or ream just because this is the reverse of this. All right, so typically you're not using the B unless you're installing root or ream. So if you are turning your heat higher, so for instance, you have this set to heat, Turn it to heat, and you see how we're nine degrees, actually eight degrees higher. Then what would happen is the R terminal would touch the G terminal, the R terminal would touch the Y terminal, and the R terminal would touch the AUX terminal. So all those would touch, and that would turn on your heat pump and an auxiliary heat to try to catch up to the temperature in the house. After that's within a degree, then what's going to happen is you're going to ramp back down to just your heat pump, all right? And then uh, if the heat pump can't keep up again, then it will switch back to both heat sources again. And that's how it will be able to heat the house or the building, okay? And then you just have that choice of turning it to emergency heat if you want to bypass the heat pump and just turn straight emergency heat on, such as the heat strips or the gas furnace. And what happens then is the R terminal touches the E terminal. And the R terminal touches the L terminal if you were to use L for anything. But typically, that's not used very often. All right. But that's that. That's how you do it. That's how you wire up a uh, Honeywell uh, TH Pro 3000 thermostat. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.